Hi, I'm Pete and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. Well, I'm back in the shop today, another rainy day. I ain't crying about the rain these days because I get to work on the MD and I'm gonna start by putting in the lines from the injection pump to the injectors. One at a time, I'm gonna start with number four. These just go right in line, one, two, three, four, up to the injectors. Take these caps off. I wanna spray these lines out good with carb cleaner just to make sure they're nice and clean. Oh shoot, there's a line back there that needs to be connected. Nuts. I gotta hook this up. This is the air intake line for the injection pump. It comes off the air filter on the intake pipe. A couple videos ago after I put this intake manifold on, a couple guys that have been in these engines before told me, whoops, you forgot to put the exhaust manifold on first and there's really no way, well, maybe I could, but it'd be really difficult to get it on because the studs for it are way down here and I haven't put them in yet. So I gotta take this back off, put the exhaust manifold on, then reinstall this. It happens. Luckily I didn't crank down on these stud nuts too hard and the gasket should be fine. All right, here we go. There. Take this masking off of the exhaust ports here. Then we put the studs in for the exhaust manifold. And while I got everything stripped down here, I might as well take out the old plugs and put in a new set that I bought. The old plugs in here were Champion D89Ds and they're a long reach plug with an electrode that actually comes off the side instead of on top. And the new plugs that I got are also Champion D89Ds and same configuration, these long reach plugs. Gap on these is 025 and I checked with the supplier that I bought the electronic ignition from and of course when you get electronic ignition you got to get the electronic ignition you got to get a high voltage coil and you have to get the right core wires I think they're graphite core not copper core not aluminum core and then I asked him about the plugs and he said that this is what they run with electronic ignition same as original so gap is 025 and that one was fine Exhaust manifold gaskets. Put the exhaust manifold on. I painted this with high temp black paint. In my experience, sometimes it lasts and sometimes it doesn't. Now I gotta get all this stuff all lined up again, all these linkages and the choke rod and everything. Get it back together. Choke right in. There we go. And the starting linkage. I think I did this once already. Always easier the second time, right? Next, I can put on this gauge bracket, which also holds the throttle and the steering shaft in place. We put in the oil pressure gauge. I'm reusing the old one. I cleaned it up, tested it, works fine. These old gauges are built really well. I'm gonna put the oil line into the gauge temporarily. My plan is to pre-lube this engine before first start. And I'm gonna plug a fitting in a line into this port right here in the main oil gallery and pump the engine full oil such that the filter fills up and all the bearings got fresh oil running through them before I do first startup. But temporarily, I'm gonna hook up this line that goes to the oil pressure gauge. We're gonna to have to do a little bending here to get it all right. 
comes around. Goes into there. There. Let me put this throttle linkage back together. Goes on like that. Next, I want to get this distributor taken apart, assessed, and cleaned up. It's a salvaged one I got from Bates, and I'm going to put electronic ignition in it instead of points. We'll just take her apart from the drive housing here. These always have a lot of grease in them, and this one's no exception. I'm going to have to clean that out. Bushing's nice and tight here. That's one thing you want to check. No play at all there. Take out the points and condenser. Now one thing I always check for on these is the advance is connected to this little shaft right here which is separate from the drive shaft and these develop quite a bit of play in them and there's not really an easy way to fix them because there's no replaceable bushing in this end of the distributor. This one is nice and tight. It's in good shape. We'll take this cover plate off for the advance. Here's the advance mechanism down in here and boy that one sure does look in good shape to me. We'll see when we get this plate off. Disconnect the advance springs. There's one. Now we can pull this advance shaft off here and see there's nothing there's nothing to replace in here if it loosens up but luckily this one's tight and the weights come right out I was going to leave the shaft in this housing but as I thought about it I want to clean under the advance plate so I'm going to take it off just got to knock this pin out There's the pin. So here's the advance plate. Here's the shaft that goes down through. There's a thrust washer on the bottom here. And then there's another thrust washer here, which I took out. So here's all the distributor parts and pieces. And everything looks good. It just needs a good cleaning. And I'm gonna clean off the case too and repaint that. And then put it back together with electronic ignition. I got everything cleaned up here and now I'm going to assemble it enough to paint it. I want to grease this just a little bit. The last thing you want is grease flying around in your distributor so very light coating. Now this bushing that's in here, there's an o-ring here but I'm not replacing that, it's fine, is an oil light bushing so once in a while you put a greaser in place of the plug in this and you squirt some grease in there and it makes its way through the bushing. Can't forget the thrust bushings here. Slide that in. And then one on the other end. And then we've got our drive gear here. Put our pin back in that secures the gear and I tapered it ever so slightly on the grinder so it would go in easier. And then we can paint it over after it goes in. Just paint that over a little bit so it locks it in. Just going to lube it with a couple pumps so the grease gone outside that oil light bushing. And it squirts out the hole on the other side when it's full. You get squirted out of there. This is something you do once a year or whatever when you change your oil in your tractor. They always got a plug in them, so you got to take the plug out and put in a zerk. I just got to make a new gasket to go between the distributor and the drive housing. I got an old one to use as a template here. Well, I'm running out of time for today, so I won't be able to finish putting it together. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it before I quit here. And that way, it'll be all set to finish up tomorrow, get it together, get it on the tractor. Well, it's another day, and I spent some time this morning chasing parts. And that's the way it is when you get to these stages of the tractor, and you get a million things going around in your head. 
an alternator, a belt for the alternator, battery cables, a battery, on and on, little pieces going around to Napa and Ag Track and looking for stuff and it takes a lot of time. But anyway, uh, today I hope to get this distributor back together. I got everything all cleaned up and painted and hopefully we can get the electronic ignition in it. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the advance back together. These little washers go in first that the weights ride on. And then I like to put a little oil on the ridges where the weights ride. You don't want a lot of oil in this housing for sure. So I just brush a little bit on where they ride and on the posts where they rotate. Then grease up the shaft. The shaft doesn't see a lot of movement. It's just the advance advancing and <laughs> receding or whatever you want to say in here. So it doesn't take a lot that on. And there's a felt that goes in the top of this and you have to just put a drop of oil on that felt when you do your tractor tune-ups and it keeps oil going to lubricate that movement there. But I put a little grease in to begin with. Here's a little bit of detective work that I found to be very interesting. I just love this stuff. So this is the advance shaft or mechanism that advances the timing in here. And on the bottom of this is a little peg and that limits its travel in the plate down here in the bottom. Now on a, a regular distributor, say on a regular M, this is a slotted hole and limits the travel of the advance. Now here's a difference I found on an MD where you're only idling on gasoline, this hole is much, is really a hole instead of a slot. So when you put this in, you fit this peg on the bottom here in, there's very little advance allowed. So I think this is how International Harvester got away with putting in a distributor that really isn't a lot different than a regular M. They just had to change the amount of advance in the plate and all the other parts are the same. Except the distributor, of course, turns the opposite direction so everything kind of had to be flipped around. We'll go ahead and put these weights in. Then we've got two more washers that go on these guys. And then we've got the advanced springs, which go in. So everything in the advanced mechanism is together, and you can see, I'll see if I can do this with one hand. Whereas on a normal distributor, these weights would fly almost out to the casing here and have a greater advance. These ones will only move a little bit because you're only idling on gas. And put this advance cover back on with these screws which are kind of a pain to get set right without them falling out. This is where a magnetic screwdriver or a screwdriver with a keeper on it helps a lot. Put that together. Now this cover plate goes on and like most things it only goes together one way. Line up the screw holes right. Now these holders for the cap and <laughs> pretty snazzy, huh? Red down where it's red and black up where it's cap. I like to get those details right. It goes like that. Now I'm going to put in the electronic ignition and I'm using a Pertronics set and <laughs> there's not much to it. I mean you've got this sensor or whatever that goes inside. You've got a special plate that goes inside and follow the instructions. I mean, it's really simple to put these in. Um, why am I doing this? Because this tractor historically always started hard cold on gas. If it was below 40 degrees, it was a heck of a time. So I'm covering all my bases here. I want it to be able to start easily in cold weather and a good hot spark is gonna help that a lot. So that's the reason I've gone this way. So to install the electronic ignition, first this plate goes in kind of a mounting plate. And it gets held down with these two screws which go into the existing holes. And then this guy that they call the igniter module goes in like this on the plate. Gets secured with these nuts. And 
And then this magnet sleeve, which this senses, goes on to the cam. And then we just feed these wires through the hole where the post used to be. Like that. Get that grommet set in there. Pull the slack out of the wires. That's all there is to it. I guess the unfortunate thing is that this dust cover won't fit on here anymore. This and this is in the way, so we're going to do without it. I've got a new rotor to put on here and a new cap. There. Now I can assemble the base on the tractor and we'll just lube up this gear real well. Slide that in there. We got a gasket that goes on here. And I did put sealer on this. If this were a magneto, I would put it on dry because you rotate the magneto here to adjust timing. But with the distributor, you don't do that. So it's fine to seal it up. Put the drive on. Got to align the ears. Now we can set the distributor timing. So I have to bring the number one piston up to top dead center of compression stroke and I think it's there now but I'm going to run it around just to check to make sure. Heck of a lot harder when the engine's got compression. So that's the exhaust valve coming down. Intake valve coming down end of the intake stroke. So now the cylinder should be coming, or the piston should be coming up to top dead center. And I've got my mark on my fan pulley here. And I'll know when it's at top dead center when they align. There, I'm on the mark. On the mark, top dead center, compression stroke, number one. Now then, number one is marked on the distributor and we wanna bring the rotor around to number one firing position. It's pretty darn close. Set that in without rotating it. I don't have to be exact because I can always turn this to get it where I need to now. I just wanted to get it roughly in time before I set it in. Yeah, we're good. Put these clamps on to hold it in place. And once the tractor, once we start the tractor for the first time, we can adjust the timing by rotating the distributor to get it where we want it to be. The last thing we want to do is put some grease in this housing. This is where the gears mesh from one to the other. So again, we got a removable plug here. Put in a grease circ. Put that plug back in. Unfortunately, I wait to install the coil because I forgot to paint this and the bolts that bring it on So that'll have to wait next I'd like to button up this diesel fuel system and I got to put in the filters and put in the water trap Now we don't need this adapter in here because the new style filters come with an o-ring That takes care of that. So we'll just pop that out and This is the final filter goes right down in there. Put the gasket on here. Around the bottom. I ran into some issues when trying to install this one which they call the auxiliary filter. The filters are both the same height here. But my two rods that go down through the middle have different shoulders on them. So this one with the long shoulder fits the final filter because when you screw it down here it'll seat into that shoulder. This one here with the shorter shoulder fits this filter because you've got this top element that goes on here and then it screws down in here to seat. Nothing's easy on this tractor. <laughs> My gosh, I never would have guessed 
that's got a seat in there like that. That's my only choice. The, the modern filters don't work like the old filters did. They had receivers that went in the top and bottom that came with the filter and these don't and it's just a lot of head scratching to figure it all out. I think this is the last thing I've got to do for the diesel fuel side of the fuel system and that is install the water trap which goes right here. First the strainer goes in and then this gasket which I'm reusing it seemed to be in pretty good shape. This allows any water that's in the diesel fuel to settle out. It's at the low point in the system. Might have been a big problem in the old days, but not so much now. And we've got the bowl. Sits in there. The bale. Yeah! My luck, I'll drop the glass and then it'll be game over. Huh. What if I put this on first? Ooh Jiminy Christmas. <laughs> you guys are welcome to swear for me at home. I don't do that, but you can. It sure will look nice when it's together. Let's see if this will work. <laughs> I'm sure the engineer that designed this is long gone, but I'd like to have a few words with him. Uh-oh. Looks like I might actually do it. <laughs> oh! Let's do something easy now. My gauge came today. This is a Rochester gauge, same brand as original on these tractors and still made in the U.S. I believe and I got it from Precision Tractor Parts who puts a matching face in to match what was original. So we'll get this in and get it hooked up. She's straight. Looks to me like it. I know, I know it's not painted but this is really going to be out of view. And it's got a finish on it. They did paint it black. I don't know. Maybe I'll paint it later. I think they'll do it for me today. I've had enough. <laughs> I gotta go through, this is a good point to go through and touch up all the paint, paint all the bolts that weren't painted with a brush, get it all cleaned up. And then I gotta finish up the gasoline side system, the ignition and the fuel supply. And then it's on to the water pump, the radiator, the alternator, gotta get that hooked up. So stay tuned and I'll keep pushing along. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.